Hey guys, I figured I'd try something new for the channel today, and I'm going to be doing a review of The Batman, directed by Matt Reeves, starring Rob Patterson, Zoe Kravitz, Colin Farrell, and Paul Dano. Whoa, take it easy, sweetheart. Hear everything they say, ain't you? Maybe we're not so different. Who are you under there? I'm vengeance. I'll be honest, The Batman was probably my most anticipated movie for 2022. I mean, it's funny to say that as a filmmaker, as a superhero film, but for me, like my history with the character of Batman, I have a lot of connection to it, whether it's from the comics or growing up on the Nolan trilogy. Um, just seeing the early trailers and teasers for this film, I was completely excited. Seeing the vision for the film with the cinematography by Greg Frazier and the score by Michael Giacchano, which had that Danny Elfman vibe mixed with Hans Zimmer's take on the character. And then also recently seeing the Planet of the Apes films, I was absolutely excited to see Matt Reeves' take on the character. Because in my opinion, uh, War for the Planet of the Apes was a very underrated film when it came out. I saw it in the theater and it was kind of that rare blockbuster, almost like Logan or The Dark Knight, where it's... It's an art house film with like a big budget. So they're swinging for the fences creatively, but then also there's a lot of, you know, money behind it. And that's kind of the vibe I got from The Batman is it's really deep down. It's really a Matt Reeves film. It's not much of, it's not really like a Robert Pattinson film. It's more of a Matt Reeves film from the get go. The, the way the movie opened and the way the movie ended, it felt like a contained uh, continuation of what Matt Reeves has been trying to accomplish. So yeah, to keep it short and sweet, uh, spoiler free, I think if you're, if you're interested in the character of Batman and you want to see a more refreshing take on it, whether you came from playing the Arkham video games or you read a few comics here and there, I think the Batman totally delivers. It also goes into new territory, which we haven't seen before, where the Batman is more of a detective in this film. The, the Riddler is more of a horror, like thriller character in this film, uh, very much inspired by uh, the Zodiac Killer Fincher film, Seven Fincher film. I even got thriller vibes, almost like I was watching Prisoners again, which is hilarious because Paul Dano's in this film and his Riddler is very reminiscent of his character in the film Prisoners. Also, if you haven't seen the film Prisoners by Denis Villeneuve, go watch it because honestly it doesn't get enough love. It's a, it's a rough watch. It's a long film, but definitely worth your time. But yeah, having said that, almost every facet of the film uh, that they were marketing, like Robert Patterson's Batman, Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman, Colin Farrell's Penguin, all of them pretty much knock it out of the park. Funny enough, the one that you actually want more from at the end of the film is actually Robert Patterson's Batman. I mean, I was talking to a lot of my friends after seeing the film, and they were saying like they wanted to see more Bruce. They wanted to see more of that philanthropist Bruce, because the Bruce in this film is uh, the, a pretty much a depressed loner. I've heard some people call him like a vampire in the film. I mean, there's a specific scene in the film where he's Bruce and you, it's almost like it's like it physically hurts him to go outside and be Bruce Wayne. Like his hair is all messed up. His eyes are bloodshot. He just looks totally depressed and tired. So the vast majority of the film, Bruce is pretty much Batman the entire time. Like he's like if he ever has to go talk to Gordon or go find a clue or just be anywhere he'd rather do it in the bat suit he would never he just doesn't prefer going outside as bruce wayne and some look at this as kind of a flaw because it's kind of obvious it's like oh why is bruce wayne like not around like i don't know i mean that's the thing about batman is it's always been obvious that bruce wayne is batman it's just for some reason people can't put it together which is funny especially with you know rob harrison's jawline is uh pretty distinct <laughs> I mean, if you had one character in the film stand next to him as Bruce and stand next to him as Batman, it would be pretty obvious. But funny enough, in this film, I don't think there's one character that actually meets Bruce and meets Batman. But yeah, in terms of the technicalities of the film, uh, Greg Frazier's cinematography is is absolutely brilliant. Like, he's just knocking out of the park lately with his work. I mean, he came from Dune, he came from Rogue One, a bunch of films. Greg Frazier's use of LED lights, uh, soft fixtures under lighting his subjects and using the minimal amount of light that he actually needs in the scene and especially in this film Greg Frazier's cinematography has a real like gritty dirty wet feel to it like almost every scene 
where they're out outdoors at night they always try to shoot through like a window also rain pouring on the window like trying to get all these types of like caustics in the image and stuff and greg fraser opts to shoot so many of the scenes with tight angles on the on the vehicles on batman and also through windows which really adds a lot to the character like whenever he uses his grapple hook or a wingsuit or any gadget throughout the film they really find a way to make it feel like kinetic like you're attached to the character and then anytime they have to have like you know grand fight scenes they almost shoot him in kind of like a john wick fashion where it's like a nice wide shot and then you get to see batman just beat up a bunch of guys either in like silhouette or like leds flashing really really fun stuff like especially the car chase in this film i won't go into spoilers but the car chase scene in particular is probably the best car chase scene i've seen in a batman movie which is crazy to say because yeah honestly i'm a huge fan of like the dark knight's uh bike sequence with the joker and the truck flipping over like i never thought that could be beat but well to be honest the scene that we have with a batmobile in this film actually tops that and i i heard like a gasp in the theater from everybody when that when the Batmobile showed up for the first time, it was honestly one of the best uh, moments of the film. And on the other end of the technical aspects, you have the sound mix, which is absolutely absurd in this film. Going back to the Batmobile, when the Batmobile first shows up in the IMAX theater, like I felt that to the to the bone. Like that was it almost sounded like horrifying the way that they made the car sound. And then also the the way they mix the score with the sound effects, especially of these. Uh, more grim horrifying scenes with the riddler and stuff it's like you feel it like when someone gets killed in this film or shot in this film you specifically feel it like it's i mean the cliche the old cliche is like sound is half of the film and uh, that couldn't be more true with the batman i also want to talk briefly about uh, michael giacchano's score because he does a masterful job of switching between a uh, bruce wayne theme which has a leitmotif to it and then also going into like a more epic Batman theme, which we heard in the trailers. And then even that, he has a theme for Catwoman. I think he has a theme for the Penguin. And whenever the Riddler is on screen or anything having to do with the murders, he goes into that eerie thriller vibe for it. And honestly, some of the tracks uh, for Riddler are very unsettling. And yeah, to see somebody like Michael Giacchano, who used to you know do the score for like Up and other Pixar films, for him to all the way to get to here where he's putting in a Batman score that's like going toe to toe with Hans Zimmer is quite impressive. But yeah, if all these things sound great to you and you haven't seen the film yet, like honestly, what are you doing? Like go see the Batman. It's a great time. I'm not ready to say it's like a masterpiece, but all in all, like I think it's probably like second to Dark Knight. Like I actually prefer this film over Batman Begins. I mean, this film is basically another origin story. It's just this film takes place in year two. So it's a little different. Like it almost feels like we're like jumping into... A story that's already been happening when you see this film you'll understand why it's an origin story because it it truly is about bruce becoming the true batman like yes the film is he, he starts as batman but the the journey that we go on throughout the film is really teaching him uh who the batman really is we're so familiar with the characters like we're so familiar with how the waynes died we don't want to see the pearls hit the floor again like we've seen it all like some people want to see it again personally i don't want to see it again like I know who Bruce Wayne is. I know his legacy. I know why he's Batman. I I just, me personally, I want to get into like the rogues gallery of the villains. I want to see the new Gotham that they had and all that. So honestly, the best part of the Batman, which I think some people have put in their reviews, the depiction of Gotham, like the way Gotham is shown in this film, the way they flesh it out. Gotham like really feels like a shithole in this film but it it works like so well like just the opening sequence of the film establishes what the city is and what batman is to the city and and from that point on i was completely sold like it's funny because this film when it finished i was telling my friends i was like man this film like made nolan's gotham look like manhattan like it didn't even look like gotham at all I, i think it also goes back to the majority of this film takes place at night and it takes place over a week so it's very like you know realistic time frame and it really like envelops you in the city and honestly like you, you, you want more from Batman, you want more from Bruce Wayne and a few characters, but you're getting these plot lines that have to do with multiple characters that all kind of lead into the end. So it's kind of like Gotham is the main character of the film in a way. Like it feels like you're watching like a really, a really well done TV show or almost like two movies worth of content that's all leading up to one point. But yeah, honestly, that's my spoiler free review for Batman. And I would honestly give it a, a 4.5 
out of five stars and that's why i gave it another letterbox there's a few flaws in the film here and there that are are more on the spoiler end that i really can't talk about all in all like what i went in to see like i went to go see a comic ac- accurate batman inspiration from the video games inspiration from other media and i totally got that like i got my money's worth for sure and yeah, one downside for people is it could be, it's a little too long. And I, I partially agree with that. Like there is, there's a few scenes that you probably could have shortened or my opinion, like if a film's long and, and, it's, and it's a good film, like even if it overstays its welcome, like I'm, I'll happily watch that. Like I, I like, you know, going into like the details of a story and stuff like that. So. Okay. I really want to discuss uh, spoilers in this film because honestly like sometimes i'm slow with films and it really took me till the next afternoon the day after i saw the film to really like see what this movie was going for honestly like thinking back on it now like i want to go see it again because i really like the angle that they went with the film so the film opens up with the the murder of the mayor by the riddler which is a really well directed and horrifying sequence but then after that, there's one of my favorite sequences in the film, which is establishment of crime in the city and the voiceover by Batman. And honestly, like the, the line when Batman is like, he's like saying when the light hits the sky, it's not just a call, it's a warning. And then he goes on to say that like he is the shadows and how he like he tries to instill fear in the criminals. That's kind of like the bedrock theme of the film, like where Batman is right now. And then we, of course, after that, we get a freaking awesome action sequence where he comes in and just beats up a ton of guys at the subway station and you know really gets in the head of that that one kid who had half clown mask who's prop you know matt reeves is trying to say he's like half there as a criminal he's like you know he's kind of like a symbol for like the future youth in gotham if there's not justice on the streets and stuff like that but the interesting thing about the film is uh, Batman even says in the beginning that like he's instilling fear in the criminals and doing all these things but it's not really working like the city's eating itself, it's getting worse. And uh, that's what I really enjoyed about this film is like the marketing for the film was all about Batman being angry, filled with vengeance. It was very rare you would ever hear Batman. I think you only heard the the term Batman like once in the film and Batman even says it. In that regard, the film is an origin story. It's you're following this character who is everyone calls him like vengeance or he calls himself, you know, an agent of vengeance basically. And I think the penguin and catwoman say vengeance here and there. But it's all it all leads to that crush at the end of the film where Riddler just goes you know basically goes like full school shooter and decides to blow up all the sea walls and stuff and and bring in these flooding and and it's just you know an awful crime that he's trying to commit at the end in that stadium uh honestly the key thing in this film the reason why I'm like even more excited for future films now is is that scene where they pull off the mask of uh, one of the shooters that was working for Riddler and they say like who are you and he says like I'm vengeance you just see this wonderful shot on Batman's face where you can see on his face like he realizes like he's totally fucked up. Like like this guy's calling himself vengeance and he's just like, you know, he's like a QAnon, like school shooter type, like a guy who just wants to like flip the table over and it doesn't matter whatever consequences happen to anybody else other than him. And Batman realizes like this is not the way to like try to save the city and and then after that he sees the the wire like zap up with electricity and there's there's hundreds of thousands of people below in water that could get electrocuted and die and then he dives for it and cuts the cable and it's just one of those like really really well told heroic moments in uh, superhero films which is honestly this is why we go to the theater is to see a superhero film is we go to the theater to see moments like these where it's you know a universal story meets its end and it's it's almost mythological in the way it's told and uh yeah and honestly from that point forward like he is now the batman of hope for the city and he's gonna lead by hope and then you know they have shots after that where he's like carrying a woman to a a chopper to get out of there and she's like holding his shoulder and she doesn't want to let go it's just stuff like that it's just really well done it, it reminded me of like the dark knight and stuff where where you know the dark knight trilogy would always end a film on like the thematic note like that's what i personally that's what i like about christopher nolan people tend to rag on christopher nolan but he always tends to like lead a film with a theme and he always ends the film the second the theme comes to its conclusion like the second dark knight ends where the bike goes up the ramp like that is the actual thematic end of that story there's no other filler there's no setup for future films it's like the story we told today is done so the film ends and that's when the audience is like wow like you sit back in your chair 
So this film didn't really do that all the way. Like, yeah, it hit these thematic themes at the end, but it did kind of drag on. It's, you know, he's like talking to Catwoman, driving off on the bike, stuff like that. But then also they showed in this film, which was rumored and basically spoiled for everybody, was that Barry Coogan is also playing the Joker. And it was kind of like a post credit scene where he's in the jail cell talking to the Riddler. And I, I was kind of lukewarm on that. Like, from seeing his face... Like, seeing the scars and his smile looked, like, artificial. It's kind of reminding me of the Death of the Family comic uh, written by Scott Snyder, which I'm a big fan of. And if they go for that more horrific Joker angle, uh, that could really work. But the problem is that, you know, they basically went for the horrific villain angle with this film with the Riddler. So I'm interested to see, like, what they do with the Joker. Are they going to mix the Joker in with a bunch of other villains in the next film? That's kind of the theme that... Uh, Matt Reeves is going for is he's interested in telling Batman stories that aren't just like one villain like he wants to have like the whole rogues gallery throughout the film and then it all kind of leads up like the way that they implemented Falcone and the Penguin in this film I was a really big fan of so honestly like I think it could all work it could be great and the most important thing I got from this film is that they truly understand the character of Batman and they set us on like a long three-hour journey where he basically discovers himself and learns from his mistakes. And that right there, that final, like, I'm no longer going to be vengeance moment, that did it for me. Like, that's that's honestly, that's what I came to see the movie for. And that that's what gets me excited for future films uh, directed by Matt Reeves. So, yeah. And, yeah, let me know, guys, if you like this video, if you want to see more movie reviews, see more movie discussions, stuff like that. I'm thinking about doing more frame-by-frame -frame videos next. I have a few uh, video essays that aren't really wrapped up that I might release. But yeah, if you like this video, uh, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe if you want some more. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.